Let's talk. We're going to Myra as a party from the Citizens Advice Bureau of Spain. Joining us as she always does at this time on a Friday. Myra, good morning to you. Good morning, Giles, <coughs> and all your listeners. Excuse me. It's quite all right. It's quite all right. It's the uh, it's it's the morning the morning the morning cough. I think we all have it this time. It's it's the weather, you know. <laughs> It's not just morning sometimes. <laughs> I don't smoke, so it's not that. If you want to get involved, if you've got a question for Myra, the number is 952-78-4000, or you can WhatsApp me on plus three four six four five ninety nine sixty seven ninety five. Myra, what we're going to do something because last time we spoke about something with so many, so many sort of abbreviations, and it was E T A E T. My my brain was frazzled, more frazzled than it normally is on a Friday. So with 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 a slight tremor in my voice, what are we talking about today? We're talking, we're not, we're not, uh, it's not going to be as complicated. <laughs> and we'll leave that until we get nearer to the time, the EEA and ETIAS, and then the digital passport, which we didn't get on to. Yeah. Okay. So today we're talking about the importance of accuracy in Spanish wills. Okay. And common errors to watch out for. And also how to streamline probate. So, for those who don't know, let's go, let's go through terms. A- a- accuracy or accuracy? Well, what do we? What, well, just tell me through some 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 basics, then, please. Well, accuracy is basically drafting, drawing up a will yep. correctly, without any weird clauses or anything incorrectly done. But if I could start with. Um, explaining the importance of having a Spanish will. Absolutely. If you own property or assets in Spain. And also how a separate will in other countries for assets outside Spain can simplify matters. This is, first of all, before we get on to, well, it is one of the, you know, some people would be advised to have their wills mirroring the UK will, mirroring the Spanish will, or the UK will, uh, um, also being used as your Spanish will, which is a possibility, but it complicates matters. It just means that it leaves your beneficiaries with some delay and probate if you use, say, let's say, a a will from your your country of origin rather than a Spanish will. And then we had somebody saying, well, you can register a a UK will for it. We're using UK. We know we have other listeners um, from other countries. countries. But if we just use an example and somebody saying, well, we had our will, our UK will registered here. It's very complicated. It's not complicated if a lawyer is doing it for you. But why would you have to go to a notary to have your English will verified and then to register it? Why not just go through the simple process of making a Spanish will? It really is the best way, Um, especially when one from some certain countries can have choice, including the UK. I mean, some EU countries do not give you the same choice that, say, the UK does right. as regards your beneficiaries, you know, so then you get. So it's really important to make sure your will is really tied up because what you don't want are any challenges or, or the registrar saying, well, this is not correct, that sort of thing. So besides, I always have said, Always have two wills, one for your assets abroad and one for your assets in Spain, because then you don't have to wait for your will abroad to go to probate, be translated, have the apple steel of the Hague added to it, when you've got a, which can be more costly than actually having a Spanish will drafted yourself. Okay. If that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, but, 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 but. Might people say, "Oh, well, yeah, but if I if I say this in my Spanish, well, it's gonna it's gonna flag me up from the Spanish authorities." And the next thing you know, because this seems to be a particularly the British, they seem to have this 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 fear of of especially sort of hacienda and stuff like that. But that's not gonna that's well, not gonna happen. No, the 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 um, 
Uh, having your Spanish will and having choice is apart from inheritance taxes. That's a totally different matter. And sure. depending on which region of Spain you reside in, then you will have your amounts payable. For instance, in Andalusia at the moment, it's practically nothing unless you have millions and millions. And this is for every beneficiary. If you have three children, this um, reduction applies to each child. So you really, unless you've got a... <laughs> goodness knows, you're very wealthy with lots of assets, your beneficiaries, if they're your children, are likely to pay nothing. Right. You still have to go through the process. People think, well, I'm trying to accept my inheritance, and they're trying to do it with just a will, and going to the bank with a will and saying, look, I'm the beneficiary. First of all, the will you hold, and we, this came up as well, I thought we ought to discuss it, is not the original copy. Somebody asked, why haven't I been given a signed will after using my lawyer and having the will drawn up into title deeds, sort of kind of deeds um, at the notary? Why have I not got? Because nobody gets the original. They go off to the database in Madrid for safekeeping. Nice. And you just get a copy. So your copy's not signed. So when you go to a bank and say, look, we've got this amount in here. We now, I'm, look, here's the will. Not only is it a copy, but the bank is not qualified to know if that will is correct or if it's a last will and testament. So it's just not a matter of holding a will. Say that person, the testator or testatrix, had made a will afterwards. That means the will you hold in your hand is now not valid. Mm. So it's very important to um, know that this has to be, and your last will and testament has to be checked out at, from the database in Madrid. Nice. Even a notary, if you're accepting the inheritance, doesn't know that the will you walk in with is the actual will or the last will. If that makes sense. Yeah, no, that, that makes perfect sense. And actually, it, it, it is a good idea because especially if it gets a little complicated and people say, oh, well, you know, I've got Uncle so-and-so's will here. And he goes, ah, oh, but he made an addendum in, in March. <laughs> and, and therefore, you know, and, you know, we've, we've all seen knives out. We know what happens. Um, so therefore, so therefore, yes. to have a, co a copy, you know, the original, sorry, in a database where it's secured in Madrid is probably a good move. And, yeah, because how does a port, port bank teller know if you've got the, the you know, if that is the last? If, if that is the last word testament, Myra. And not only the bank, the bank director is, uh, he's, uh, um, he's given his instructions from above. He can't give you anything because you may not have paid taxes if applicable. Mm, indeed. But he can't give you anything. The most he'll do is freeze your account, so it's best to keep so quiet <laughs> for the time being, yes, as indeed. say the Spaniards yes, do. Indeed. And as you say, at an endum, it's actually a codicil, and they're not so common in Spain. And while we're talking about a codicil, because you've decided to change something in your will, mm. it's going to cost you probably as much as having another will drafted. So I would suggest, you know, rather than codicils, have another will drafted. They're not expensive. Well, it depends who you go to. At the moment, I'm drafting a lot of wills as a paralegal, and mm. I'm really enjoying it. I'm really enjoying seeing what notaries are, <laughs> are doing as well. It, it, when they very occasionally will put a will together, they normally don't want to put a will together if it's the Spanish-English double-column will. Mm. They want the lawyer or somebody to provide them with the will, and then they put it into a deed. Yes. into an escritura. Yeah. So, again, I, it's something. And talking to notaries, they've said to me, well, ask me the will, the borrador, yeah. or the, the draft, because they don't want that side of things. Simple if it's a Spanish one. <laughs> yes, it, so, it, 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 it was the mischievous laugh when you said when you said the notario there that, 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 that got me, Mara. <laughs> I'm not sure where that came in. Yes. Um, it's very interesting to me. It's... Um, it's something that I wrote about way when the uh, European regulations on succession were coming in. In, in um, we say force, but they've been enforced earlier. But we can't complicate things explaining how these directives or regulations work from the EU. It's not something that suddenly just appeared. So I wrote in January, and the using into force uh, came in was in, I think, midnight of the 15th of August, if I remember rightly. Yeah. It's a long time, 2015, I think, back. But
But I wrote about that and I had all sorts of strange calls. And in fact, I may have said before now that somebody called me from the notary and said, the notary refuses to add the clause, the nationality clause. And I had to say, just, you're not in the right place. Just get out and tell me when you're out of there. <laughs> so the nationality clause issues, common mistakes, lawyers and notaries, with all due respect to lawyers and notaries, because they're not all um, having these issues, mm. they sometimes make mistakes when drafting the nationality clause, such as incorrectly stating the testator's nationality. This can cause jurisdictional issues, particularly with cross-border inheritance law. You have to get everything right. And then, of course, as a matter of talking to people, say, because they have a spouse who's from some faraway country and are they going to use that law, um, Irish law, for an example of inheritance not Northern Ireland, that's different again, it's different to the choice you get for in the UK. So it's not always straightforward. And you may write something in a will thinking everything's okay, but it's not. So I enjoy looking at all the possible things that could possibly go wrong. It's how I am and it's interesting. It's very interesting. So um, lawyers and notaries getting the nationality clause wrong. I mean, that means that um, mm. if somebody wanted to challenge your will and something was wrong drafted into your wills, then they could use this to challenge. You know, you never know when you're going to have a child or a beneficiary come out the woodwork. You just don't know. Or you might be UK and wish to disinherit children, which you can't if you're Spanish, right. unless okay. Okay. they try to poison you. Oh, right. That's, yeah, that sort of it really you can is, disinherit, yeah. but yes, your child, if they've tried to do away with No, you. I mean, they did, not, not, not the child's trying to poison you, Myra, but, you, but, but in Spanish, you can't just disinherit your children going, I reject you. Uh, you know, that's not an option. Only if they try to poison you. Uh, Only well, if. I mean, you're using, po- I mean, other, other, than the other means are presumably, are, are presumably acceptable. I mean, they can try, you know. So yes, just other, other words. So yeah, okay. Just to say that it's not as right. that, you know, it takes a lot. You can't just inherit, as you okay. say, your children, unless, but you can't. But you can, if you're UK, for example, you use the UK, you can just leave, you know, so we uh, I sometimes wonder how notaries go through it all when they're reading the drafts of wills. They're going, married, um, now divorced, and married, and divorced. Because they're so used to a simple Spanish will, usually a couple. <laughs> yes. It's changing. We'll just be married. They'll have one wife and their children. It's so simple. But if you've got a marriage, children from that marriage or children from that marriage, all that has to be in a will. A lot of people don't understand where they ask you for your parents' names. Well, they do that, don't they, when you go for residency, because this comes from the fact that Spanish children will have separate names to their parents. So parent might be Fernandez something, and the other partner may be Hernandez something. And so you're the child of Fernandez and Hernandez, or Fernandez and Garcia. So they need to know who the parents are to know who you're the child of. Right. Even though... We don't have that same system because normally the surname goes down to the children. So it's not like, as you know, the Spanish surnames, which are the first surname of the father and the first surname of the mother. Exactly. So it's easy. But that doesn't stop Spain wanting the will, even though it's a will done. And it's still got to have those important little They wouldn't do it any other way, put it that way. So you think, well, what's my mother? And then people say, what's my ex got to do with it? Well, we have to know if you had children with your ex. You have to put all these details down. You can't miss them out. One of the things that I love about okay. uh, one of the things about love about Spanish bureaucracy is the fact that they can't get around the fact that in you know, the UK we don't have two apellidos, and so therefore they no. use my middle name as my my first. So I'm forever being called. <laughs> yeah. So I'm first. So I'm for, I, I was sitting in a queue, for example, and I'll hear the voice. I'll hear Gilles because they can't say Giles. So it's Gilles Norman. So I am of the of the north because Norman is my middle name. You see, so that's always the indicator. <laughs> and people look around at who this strange Gilles yeah, Norman. Gilles. I am Gilles. Yes. The Provincia. This so. is why I thought so many times wished and just let them use my second name because Myra is 
written as in Spanish, it's Mira. Mira, and it's yeah. It's quite embarrassing when you're being called out. Like, look, look, you feel Chinese. Yes, but so, um, just to diverse quickly, I was in the hospital and there, there was, there was a, uh, an English family there called Glass, and it was a family, and the very nice receptionist shouted out, family of glass. She meant the glasses, <laughs> but, but I looked around to see all these people who were made of very shatterable materials. Anyway, Myra, <laughs> please continue. No, that's interesting, because yes, we also, we get used to it as part of how we... Uh, reside in Spain and how we have to get used to the differences and the spelling, etc. That's when people learn a language, you have to learn the alphabet because it's different sounds. Indeed. You know, Indeed. Yes. they're not as complicated as English. Hence my name, M-Y, would be M-I. Yeah, I mean, that's that's, that's, a, that's a whole other new... Why is the now? Yes. So, um, right, and people think you need uh, witnesses. Mm -hmm. I got something the other day where I think some... AI was on about witnesses needed for Spain. Witnesses are only needed if the um, the uh, notary decides that there's something there that's not quite right. Mm -hmm. You obviously have to be in full, uh, you have to qualify to be able to uh, uh, draft your will. You have to be of sound mind and the, the notary has to say this. So witnesses say if somebody was blind in that sort of situation. Otherwise, you do not have to take two witnesses. You do, do need to understand Spanish fluently enough to understand a will, or you have to have an interpreter. Sure. So that makes. I mean, that makes sense. So you're you're actually putting down. You know, you're actually dictating exactly what you mean, rather than just nodding and and <laughs> trying to get by in Spanish. Yeah. And other, um, besides the nationality clause, other errors can arise in Spanish wills, such as ambiguous language, unclear distribution of assets, or improperly completed witness requirements. But then we're saying, in general, you don't need those. Um, failure. Also, a lot of people failure to update the will. Yeah. They have a will, and then things change, such as marriage or divorce. Or properties or, or whatever additional else. assets. Yeah. It's always good. if You you can make it simple. If you think you want all your assets to go to your beneficiary, it's always more simple than starting to list everything, you know, to so-and-so this. And remember, it's not just a notary will draft your will, but it's a registrar. When your beneficiaries go to accept the inheritance, it's the registrar that's going to accept that will or not. So what? So, uh, when, to, I mean, do you need to notify anybody? I mean, you don't presume you don't need to speak to a town hall. You don't need to let them know anything like that at all. It's, it's purely a thing with with the, with the notary, and then that gets taken to a database in, in central in Madrid. Yeah. Yes. Um, the the importance I think is that people don't consider is letting your children know exactly how it's going to work, right. regardless of you probably using a lawyer to accept the inheritance, which is a good thing to do because your children are coming over. A lot of people want to get the NIE beforehand. I don't think that's necessary because they say they're in the UK or France. They can get one at the uh, consulate there if they're going to accept an inheritance. And goodness knows what's going to happen with these certificates when we've had valid for three months for a while. First of all, they were your numbers for life on your NIE. Mm. But the certificates for a while were only valid for three months, so there's no point then. It wasn't any point in getting a, uh, an NIE and then the certificate wouldn't be valid. So I don't think that's really important. I think what's important that, for instance, I talk to people, I explain everything to them. I explain before, during and after. And it's important that your beneficiaries, whoever they are, uh, are given peace of mind. It's going to be a really distressing time for them. And the last thing they need, the complications of the will. So to put your beneficiaries through the steps that they will have to go, even though a notary will take charge, I think it's always good to know, rather than going blind, what's going to happen. Sure. Sure. So, what are the what are the major points you'd like to like to give people today, then, Myra, about about Spanish wills and what they should be considering? Okay, I think they should um, first of all consider having separate wills because it avoids uh, the cost and delay of um, probate from their original country with their original uh, will, right. and to keep those two wills totally separate. 
you know, you can have, and it will likely have, um, if you're a foreigner here, that the the will you're making will exclude all our other wills except for wills you may have made abroad. Even though it's a bit complex because the regulations on um, succession, the EU regulations, talks about worldwide assets. Yeah. But here you've got the notaries and the registrars understanding that your will is your last will and testament, but it doesn't it doesn't mean you cannot use a will that's drafted abroad for your assets, and that should be in the will as well. Um, the clauses, that they are correct. Your nationality clause is correct, you know, depending what nationality you have. How that's worded is really important. Two things, what else? That when you go to the notary, it doesn't matter who's drafted your will, because you know this whole thing about proofreading. Yeah. When one person is proofreading, or even two people, you can look at the same thing over and over again, and there could be one digit wrong. And we're not going to rely on the notary to check that. So you are actually going to have your interpreter, if you, you, you're, you can read Spanish, you're going to read the will carefully and see if there's any errors there, because that is the time you correct. The notary gives you time to make corrections. It's not just, here's your will, it's been drafted for you, it's your wishes, you've given your wishes to somebody who, who, can, who is a will's drafts person, and here it is, just sign it there. No, you go through the whole will. It's really important, and not to do it in a hurry. If people want to find more information, okay, yep. where, where, if people, because I'm about to run out of time, Mara, so if people wish to... Oh, get, sorry. It's all right, it's okay. Um, if people want to find some more information uh, about this, of course, first port of call should be, I mean, obviously you are knee-deep in doing your paralegal stuff and, and, and working through through the through the clauses. Um, they can still contact, they can always contact. First port of call is Citizens Advice Spain. Just putting that into Google will bring... Up. And your options are there of whether you wish to go for a personal consultant or you wish to just use a citizen's advice. Remember, I think people have to understand citizen's advice should not be doing things outside their remit. You cannot imagine sometimes the amount of documentation I will get for somebody asking me to peruse it. Good grief, yes. It's, it's, it's a thankless so, yeah, time. Yes, advice advice Spain. It's a thankless ta- task, Myra, but we're very glad that you do it, and you're very glad that you come with us uh, on TRE, Citizens Advice Bureau of Spain. Pop it into your search engine, and, and Myra and the team will come up. Have a one, don't get, hope the cough gets better. Don't get too tied up with, with whatever, and uh, we will speak to you in two weeks' time. Okay, take care. Bye for now.